it has come to my attention that I start every video in this series with OK. So I made sure at least it wasn't the first word out of my mouth, just in case you're watching a bunch of these back to back. Pardon me. Some of these things, they're just involuntary, you know. All right, so here we have Fitzmagic uh, releasing a football. And the football I will approximate as that little oblong thing. And he releases it. Okay, so we're given the mass. Fitzmagic releases a 0.4 kilogram football from 1.1 meters above the ground. Okay, so say that's 1.1 meters right there. with a speed of 20 meters per second. Probably that's inclined something like this, you know? But we really just care about the speed in energy calculations. So, uh, okay, continuing to read. A short time later, it has reached a height of 2.2 meters above the ground and is traveling at 17 meters per second. All right, so it traveled a little ways here. And now it's way up here, okay? And we'll say that that's 2.2 meters above the ground. And we're saying that it is now going a mere 17 meters per second. Part A asks, how much work was done by the force of gravity on the football during this time? All right. Easy enough, right? Because gravity only cares about the vertical motion of an object. And if you remember back to how we defined the work done by gravity, we defined it in terms of the negative of the change in potential energy of an object, okay? And here, we know the mass, we know little g, of course, that's just a constant, and we know the final and initial heights. So as long as we're thinking clearly about this problem, we can uh, very quickly get to a place where we're happy. So negative, then we final potential energy minus initial potential energy. Distribute that minus sign so that we get this and then if we like we can just substitute in or group things a little bit I'll, I'll group things a little bit I like to group things um, factor out the mg h0 minus hf and then we have 0.4 times 9.8 for this set of numbers I think there's another set of numbers um, in the other problem or other version of this problem. So initial height, 1.1 minus 2.2. And if we plug all that in correctly, we should get that gravity did negative 4.31 joules of work on the football. All right, does this make sense? It should make sense because the football is moving up, but force of gravity is down. And if we have a an angle like that between the force and the displacement of an object, we know from the definition of work that we should be getting negative numbers, right? It's tending to take away energy from the football. And that makes sense from our study of projectiles, right? If you were just told, oh, you start a projectile here and it ends up at a higher point, or we're looking at a higher point, you would expect that the velocity of that object would be smaller than it was at the lower point, right? As you, as you rise, right, gravity is working against at least the vertic upward vertical velocity of an object. And so this is consistent with a lot of different aspects of our phys physics education thus far, and that's the number you should get. Now for B, how much work was done by drag on the football during this time? Okay, well, if we're thinking about the forces acting on the football, we know that there really should be only two. There should be gravity and there should be drag, okay? And drag is going to oppose always. 
the direction of motion of the football. So I've drawn the force vector for drag opposite the velocity vectors there. And that means that since drag is a non-conservative force, then it's going to be the sole contributor to the work done by non-conservative forces. So this is just equal to the work done by drag. As for what that is, well, we have the work energy theorem that can help us out. If you try to go for the definition of work, that gets nasty because, I mean, it can still be done, but it gets nastier than this because the direction of the velocity is constantly changing as this thing moves along its little per parabolic path. And that means that the force of drag is always changing its direction as well. So be be careful if you if you go that direction. I mean, you know that it's a parabola that is tracing out, so that can help you in terms of doing the that problem from the definition of work. But please don't do it that way. Just think about it for a moment and do it this way. And that means that we just need to figure out what the change in kinetic energy of it is and the change in potential energy. Uh, this, I oh, don't see here I am slipping into the the notation from my physics 100 course. So let's just get rid of that. And we can go back to good old delta K plus delta U for you all. So change in kinetic, change in potential. All right. Well, we know everything about its final kinetic energy and its initial kinetic energy. And we know everything about its final potential energy and its initial potential energy. And yes, it's a lot to plug in, that's that's fair, but it's not that bad. For, for the set of numbers we have here, we get something like that, something like this. Then eh, I suppose we could have rearranged this a little, factored some things out, might have made it a little less hairy, but it's really not that bad as things go. And there we go, okay? Plug all that in, you should get that it has done negative 17.9 joules of work on the football. This is something um, that isn't immediately clear from the statement of the problem. You have to kind of work through it. But uh, it makes sense that drag will be working against its movement, right? So we, we just it's just a matter of how negative it's going to be, what that number is. But we know it's going to be negative because drag is always resisting the motion of the football. And in this case, uh, we do gain potential energy, right? Uh, this, this right here, the change in potential energy is positive. But this thing loses a significant amount of kinetic energy. It's only going from 20 meters per second to 17 meters per second here and here, but you're squaring that speed, that magnitude of the velocity, and so it ends up being a much bigger difference than you would otherwise expect. And that's the number you should get. Hopefully that checks out with what your work was, and we'll go on to the next problem.